I'm very honored to have Chief Charles Dean with us here. He's a longtime professional, and he's here to talk tonight about the implementation plan for the, uh, the Prince William County Board of Supervisors resolution in terms of police officer interactions with suspected illegal aliens. So please join me in welcoming Chief Charles Dean. Citizens, 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 citizens are, are, are giving up on our federal government and are pushing to have this issue dealt with, that should tell you enough that we're done. And I've watched the communities change. And I was present, you know, at the County Board of Supervisors meeting back in July. And you were resistant then. Um, you didn't want to deal with this issue. You didn't see it as a problem. And yeah, one of the things, of course, is, you know, I've been painted with being opposed to the resolution. Well, you know, the truth is, I'm, really didn't get a chance to oppose it uh, or take a position on it. I was uh, asked to react to it, and I did. By now, most of you have read the lead edition in the Washington Post, I think it was Sunday, entitled, Hounding Immigrants in Prince William County, the Poisonous Fruit of Congressional Failure. Despite any cries of fairness and impartiality, Prince William County, which over the past few decades has established an outstanding reputation for inclusion, will be painted as a racist community intent on driving out a single uh, population. When I was selected as police chief, they um, asked various questions. And one of the responses I recall giving, which is what I believe, is if you want a yes person, don't hire me. If you want someone to tell you what you want to hear, I'm not going to tell you that. I feel that if if you hire me, I'm going to have to tell you what I think. When you think about 12 million illegal aliens being in this country and five to 800,000 coming in each year, don't you think we need to prioritize based on the risk to our community? You don't have enough money to put enough police officers on the street on every street corner. By probably mid-February, it had become really evident to me that um, some of the energy we were putting into it was focused on activities, particularly activities on part of the police, that weren't productive. Most specifically, what we call the probable cause component. The notion that if there's probable cause to suspect an individual is not in the country legally, the police must inquire about their immigration status. If you followed the policy thread back to the original resolution, there was an apparent interest slash mandate that we do that with everyone we come in contact with as a police department. It was originally drafted provided for questioning everybody that was stopped, and then it was changed to only on probable cause. This, this probable cause determination is a matter of discretion that could be challenged in the courts. And by, by using a probable cause standard, you're opening yourself and your, your officers up to constant court challenges, whereas if everybody would have been asked for, for to, to verify their legal status in the country, there would be no challenge to it. Well, I think our reaction to the issue of checking every single person was simply it's an unmanageable workload. You know, at the end of the day, we have to operate a police department. Charlie has to operate a police department. I have to operate a government. Think about the potential citizen reaction. People that know that we know they're here legally in the community being detained for an extra period of time while we run uh, immigration checks on them. Um, a, we don't have the kind of staff capacity to have officers tied up in that with every encounter we have in the police department. Uh, and B, I really think that that raises some serious questions about long-term community support. If we wanted to kill this thing, it might be that what we could have done was to detain everyone for an extraordinarily long period of time while we're running immigration checks and generate the kind of community outrage that I believe that would have generated. And that probable cause standard narrowed considerably the universe of people that we would be dealing with on illegal immigration question. 
So that was trying to essentially define in a more operationally viable way what our response was to the board's policy directive. In enacting a probable cause standard as opposed to the standard under which any citizen would be asked their immigration status, I think this uh, gives uh, the chief some of the uh, flexibility that he's asked for, although it is frankly a little bit stronger than, than, than what he has suggested. But um, uh, we look forward to working with him to, to implement this in a way that um, gives uh, the citizens um, what they want while at the same time protecting the civil rights and liberties of all folks who are in this country. What was going to create a problem for us was the notion that a police officer was going to have to make a decision, usually a split-second decision, about whether or not to inquire about someone's status. Before the resolution, there was kind of a narrow window, if you will, of racial profiling allegations. Well, now they're going to come into play from all over the place because we're being directed to inquire into immigration status of a number of people. So that created a position where racial profiling was going to be more of a concern and more of a liability for our officers. The policy is that they must inquire if there's probable cause. So on the one hand, they had no discretion. They must inquire. The problem is that determining whether there's probable cause requires a certain level of discretion. If a judge later determines there was not probable cause, that officer ends up on the hook. I think we're going to see more and more challenges to the integrity of our officers and allegations of bias and allegation of, of racial profiling as we enter this uh, new area of responsibility. And as, as a result of that, I think it's important that we do what we can to protect our officers in the county and maybe prevent lawsuits. In order to prevent these very undesirable lawsuits, we needed these video cameras to the tune of like, I think it was $3 million. You've never made this request before, and I, I'm going to guess it's fair to say you probably wouldn't anticipate making it if it weren't for the illegal immigration component that we're talking about. I have never supported putting cameras in all of our cars until now because they are very expensive. And comparing that to other resource needs, I've never gotten there to support cameras. I think I'm over, I'm over that now. I think this issue is what pushes me over. We're working on the 09 budget now, which would go into effect in July of 08. It will be adopted within the next few weeks. And the deliberation that the board has to make is whether to fully fund the immigration initiative, which would include cameras. Uh, they, can, they can include any part they want. I mean, they can partially fund it, fully fund it, or not fund it at all, and still they do it. The whole program was getting unbelievably expensive. And I just had a difficult time you know, when we're seeing housing prices go down and we're coming into a recession possibly and gas prices are starting to skyrocket, that we would spend $3 million on these cameras that were only needed to prevent lawsuits. There had to be a better way to avoid those lawsuits. I know that there's talk about amending the resolution. I don't know how serious that is, but it could be that the policy would be revised to only include those people that are physically arrested and you would inquire of the immigration status of those people. Absent the cameras, a better defense against the racial profiling issue was, we've arrested you for something that you shouldn't have done, a criminal code violation. We've taken you into custody. Now you're in custody, we're checking everybody. A bald, bearded, white male who's 53, they gonna run a check on me if I end up in the back of a cruiser or at the police station. We got a policy that isn't quite where it needs to be, you know, isn't really doing what we wanted it to do and I don't think was inherently consistent with the community's core values, coupled up with the fact that we've got this big expense that exists solely for the purpose of mitigating some of these underlying flaws. I had a lot of conversations with a lot of board members. I talked to Frank Principi, I talked to, to Mike May, I talked to Mrs. Cadigan, Mr. Jenkins, Wally Covington. I talked to every member of the board, including Corey Stewart, about sort of the need to re-examine this. And then on April 22nd... I'm going to suggest that we uh, not fund the uh, car camera program suspension of $3.1 million. Uh, having spoken to some police officers, uh, there's a feeling that I, I don't think it's necessary Looking at your recommendation on the car cameras, have you spoken with the chief about that? Is uh... I, I have spoken with the chief um, in the past about that, uh, and I. I, I is, so is anyway. the chief here? Is he? Um, I, I suspect by me saying, you know, "Chief, would you please come to the board chambers?" that he may appear magically pretty quickly. <laughs>